One quarter of 100 episodes, 25 episodes, pretty wild. That is, congratulations. Think, Tyler? I think that's pretty sick, man. 25, I thought we would get to three. <laughs> really? You're lucky number 25. Hey, that's awesome. I'm very happy to be here. Arden, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Owner, operator of Ahoy Tours. Yes. What's your last name? White. Arden White. Yes. That's an interesting name. Thank you. <laughs> so Ahoy Tours, I saw this on Instagram a few months ago and immediately I thought, yes, finally someone's going to do like bar crawl tour. You go to a big city and they have like double decker bus tours. Yes. There's all these tours around Boston and New York, but there's not really any in Tampa. Right. Finally, yeah. someone did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I remember I went to Nashville with my family at the end of 2021, and I saw golf cart tours everywhere, um, and I thought that that would be such a cool idea to do, and I kind of had that in the back of my mind, and then um, I was randomly listening to, I forget what it is, it might be NPR. Yeah, <laughs> like NPR. My boyfriend radio. listens to NPR, I think yeah. we were just listening to it in the car, and um, they mentioned Tampa tourism being up. Um, since the pandemic. So we're finally back as of 2021. We're back to the pre pandemic numbers, which I think is like 15 million per year. And it's probably gone up since then. So giving someone giving visitors something to come and experience, I thought would be really neat. A 100%. And so do you buy these golf carts? Or do you rent them? Or how does that work? I own that. Yeah, I own that big yellow golf cart. The um, big yellow golf cart. That thing's <laughs> awesome. Yes, and what does it you. seat? Eight people? Eight people. Yeah. So I can have seven passengers, including myself. Now, you went to the University of Tampa. Yes. You studied entrepreneurship. Going, first of all, where are you from? Are you from the area? I am. I'm from Plant City. Oh, so, wow. Well, okay. you're a native, so you know where that is. Yeah. Um, but I typically tell people I'm a Tampa native. The, Plant the new City. people. Yeah. The strawberry capital of the world. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm surprised you didn't have like some pink strawberry theme on your uh, golf cart. I might implement that. You yeah. Know, that's a neat idea. You got you to pay your respect. A hundred percent. Yes. Well, super cool. So Thank you're you. from the area. Was Did you look at other schools around like the south or was Tamp UT always where you wanted to go? I was open to other schools. I knew that I wanted to stay local. So UT was kind of like the number one spot in my mind. And then I think I went on a, a campus tour, loved the entrepreneurship program. And then UT ended up being the only college that I applied to. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you were I, locked in. I was locked in. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is interesting. I've heard so many good things about that program at UT. We mm -hmm. have a couple people um, in our company that were uh, graduates of that program. And then you also mentioned too, you actually got your master's degree in entrepreneurship. Yes. So you've ran through that whole cycle. Yes. Interesting stuff. Did you go into school thinking you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the program and I thought the, the faculty and the resources that they had were amazing. Um, but ultimately I wanted to be what they call an intrapreneur. So I would... I wanted to be someone that would go into someone else's business and help them elevate and grow. I definitely didn't think that I would be doing my own. Yeah. So, and yeah. such an interesting business too. hundred yeah. percent. And completely new. I mean, I remember like duck tours were around when I was a kid. Have you seen those? I haven't, but it sounds kind of familiar. It's those, <clears throat> it's like this big, almost like they took a school bus, bolted on, like the bottom of a boat to it. It's got a big fan propeller in the back and it can like drive around the city and then literally go into the water and it's like a boat tour, bus tour combo, duck tours. Yeah, look it up. Well, that sounds They're way cooler. I'm, yeah, <laughs> a little competition there yeah, for no sure. Kidding. Hey, maybe the golf cart can graduate oh, one day. I've never heard of this. This is great. It's so sweet. And obviously for Tampa being a very water, like heavy city, it was awesome. But I know they have yeah. it in Boston. I saw them here when I was little. But they're not around anymore. So when I saw what you were doing, I was like, yes, that's perfect. So when you graduated college, did you go immediately into your graduate program? Yes. So during that time when you're studying entrepreneurship, are you like, what am I going to do when I graduate? I got to come up with a business. Like, how did this whole thing come about? Well, while I was at UT, so I told you I got my real estate license right out of high school. Um, so I was practicing real estate that whole time. And for the most part, I was implementing that in my real estate career. But in terms of 
what I wanted to do long term, yeah, I felt very um, confused. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I want again, I wanted to go into someone else's business and really help them grow, but I didn't know exactly what like industry I wanted to be in, things like that. So yeah. when I graduated um, with my master's at the end of 2020, if you had told me that I would be doing this, I would be completely shocked. <laughs> I think so, it's awesome. Thank you very much. So, yeah, entrepreneurship, right? I feel like for real estate, that's perfect. I mean, if someone wanted to go into real estate and they asked me, hey, I'm going to go to college first, entrepreneurship would be the way to go. I think so, too. Like when you're a real estate agent, you are your own business. Exactly. So did that entrepreneurship degree really help you in real estate? Yes, absolutely. Because it really means it makes you think about even if you are a realtor and you are your business, it really helps give you like those concrete things that I think you need to succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and now they actually, and I know that you interviewed the president of it, the real estate club. Yeah. And I think that I could be wrong, but I think that's ran out of the entrepreneurship center. It is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I know that um, Dr. Kutramanis, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still like the head of it, but he was, um, he was there when, I was there and he was a realtor as well. So we kind of had some cool conversations about Tampa real estate. Is he the professor that just won the faculty award, like the most liked faculty member or something like that? Did you hear about that? I didn't, but that does not surprise me. Yeah. Like yeah. you've heard that name come up a few times at UT. People love that guy. We he's should get awesome. him on the show. You should. No, he's awesome. Yeah. Super, super. I mean, very well liked by the students. It's, I, I remember like, do, do you guys still use rate my professor? Did you use that in college? I did. Yes. Like that, yeah. that to me was hilarious. You'd go on there and you'd see like, this guy sucks. Don't use this class. But the professors that everyone liked had great reviews. Everyone wanted to take their class. You got to have that at, at exactly. a university. You got to have those professors that draw students in. Yes. I'd love to get that guy on the show. Yeah. So he was kind of like a mentor to you in real estate and in entrepreneurship. You graduated, got your real estate license, started working in that. So you created this tour. How long have you been doing this for? Not very long at all. I got the golf cart back in January and that was sort of, it was impulsive, but also wise, I guess. But once I decided that this is what I wanted to do, I called Davis Island EV yeah. where they sell the icon carts. And I was like, I want to buy an eight seater golf cart. Um, and, and I they think said that'll be 25 grand. Yeah, no, yes. Once you do all of the street legalization and everything that you need to do to it, that price changes pretty quickly. But um, they were super helpful, and I knew I wanted it in yellow. And they told me, okay, we have an eight-seater, but it's in yellow. And I thought that that was such a good sign because that's what totally. I wanted, you know? Why so, yellow? I just think it's bright, and it, <laughs> I don't know, it just, right? It's not... You can see it coming, that's for 100%, sure. A hundred percent. It's not very discreet, but... Um, yeah, I just thought it was bright and colorful and it kind of goes with my logo. So I knew that that's what I wanted. And, um, so I got that in January. I moved, I went on a vacation, had a bunch of stuff going on in February, and March. So I started doing the actual tours with friends and family, I think in April, and then got my first official booking that I didn't know back in May. So super recent. Amazing. Back in May. And how did it go? I mean, is it, is it going well? Is there anything unexpected? Are there problems that come up that you think, Ooh, I didn't even think about that. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what took me a while to put it out there is the fear of not being perfect. And sometimes that can make you slow to act, which sure. there's not really a lot of room for an entrepreneurship. So uh -huh. I had to quickly get over that, but, um, there's definitely been, uh, some feedback, like people want, like cup holders on it. People ask me questions that I did not prepare for at all. They're like, oh, what's that building and how old is it? <laughs> just some <laughs> random building. <laughs> so yeah, just um, definitely learning as I'm going. I mean, yeah. I have a lot of facts and stuff, but people ask me questions that, that are interesting and I wasn't prepared for. So the name Ahoy, is that like a pirate thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Makes so sense. Tampa pirate. Tampa pirate. Ahoy. Yeah. We figured. We were talking before the show, like, what's with the name? It's got to be Tampa Pirate theme, right? A hundred percent. Of course. Yes. Right. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything too general, like Tampa, Tampa Tours. Tours. Yeah. yeah. Name's probably already taken anyway. Uh, also that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
So these questions that come up during the um, tour, are you like, what's kind of your strategy? Is it more of a history tour? Is it a sightseeing tour? Like, what do you typically do? And do you offer multiple different tours? So right now I have my iconic Tampa tour, which is like a play on the fact that it's an icon golf cart and we go to all of the iconic Tampa locations. And it's a mix of modern knowledge. I throw a lot of real estate knowledge in there because I Mm. I know it. And some people like to hear it, you know, like, oh, that building's going up and Mm. the average cost for a unit in there is 1.5 million. And everyone goes, whoa, that's crazy. And if you want to buy, use me. 100%. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a mix of history, modern knowledge, and also sightseeing. So we stop at the University of Tampa. We stop over in Channel Side. We grab some photos. Um, if people want to stay like at Sparkman Wharf and grab a drink, they can do that too. Oh, that's cool. Even if it's not the bar crawl. Um, I've had people that want to hang out and I always just accommodate yeah. that. Yeah. So it's really a bar crawl slash tour. Like, do you stop at different bars and get drinks along the way? For the bar crawl, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and the bar crawl is a little bit less informative. That's like when I have my music kicked up really loud and everyone's just sort of having a good time. But I still throw in some some Tampa facts. How do you do the, like, speaking on the tour? Do you have a speaker system with a microphone set up? Yes. Yes. Oh, so cool. I've got two speakers. I have one designated just for music. And then I have another one um, that Davis Island EV installed. And I have a little speaker oh that I wear. You're yeah. legit. That's yes. awesome. <laughs> So, yeah, history. I'd imagine you go to what? Ybor City, yes. downtown, UT, like all these. The cool thing about Tampa is it's pretty dense. Like the urban core is small, right? You can like hit it in probably one day. How long are your tours? Um, the informative tours are about two hours and then the bar crawls are three hours. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Thank so you. is the plan to get more of these golf carts and grow this business? What do you? What's the vision? A hundred percent. So I would like some more golf carts and then... I think even though I'm starting out on a golf cart right now and um, that's really great, I want to scale that. Ultimately, I do want to be like a core part of Tampa tourism and offer multiple things like uh, like boat charters, Ah, things like that. Um, That's a big one. I think Tampa is going to become more of a visitor destination. Like we have a cruise port here, but I think a lot of people get on the boat, get off the boat. Tampa is not really a spot where people come on a cruise. I could see Tampa being a stop though. Like Key West is a stop. Right. Right. You go there, you have drinks, there's fun stuff to do, walk around. Because our port is downtown, you could probably maybe, or you could take the trolley to Ebor. You could probably walk to Ebor. Like there's so much to do within a small area in Tampa. Um, I could see you kind of taking over this little space. There's not a whole lot of competition in it from like a business perspective. You know what I mean? So what's kind of the goal right now? Just boost up bookings, reviews, like get, get it rolling, get the word out. Yes. Yeah. So really at that like business development stage, um, where I'm just focused on growth in this golf cart. And then hopefully by the end of the year, I'm so booked up that I have to get a second golf cart. There's a lot of excitement around Tampa's growth right now. Yes. And I would imagine people are asking about the construction projects as you're driving around too. Like what's going here? What's going there? Like you said, you have that real estate knowledge. Does that come up in every tour? Like what's this building? What's going on here? Yes. And I think just the amount of cranes that you see in the sky on any given day, people definitely want to know. And um, like you said, there's a lot of excitement, lots of articles that have been um, published talking about Tampa's growth that visitors know, and uh, they'll they'll definitely ask me about things like that. Yeah, yeah, especially tell, Water Street. That's tell like me such about a big the uh, Barbie tour. Yes. Hold that up, Tyler. <laughs> um, we just did this Barbie tour, or it was a Barbie <laughs> crawl. It was a Barbie bar. Oh, crawl. A, it was a crawl. Okay. Yes, um, a Barbie tour would be interesting, though. I just like take them to all of the pink places in Tampa. Right. Yeah. Um, but That'd be a short trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's your one stop. Um, no, the Barbie crawl was so much fun. I was telling Tyler, I actually thought of this way later than I should have. With all of the Barbie promotion going on, I thought of it like the week that this photo was posted. I Amazon primed that dress, that hat, had my little sister take photos of me um, <laughs> to promote it. So yeah, I was kind of like late to the scene, but it was really great. We were sold out and um, I've been getting lots of requests to do another one this weekend. So I'll probably do that too. Yeah. The movies yeah. in theaters for a few weeks. Why not? Exactly. Yeah. But ultimately I would like to do a monthly themed crawl. I think that would be fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, you could play on some Tampa themes too. Like you could do Gasparilla during January or February. Right. Like Super Bowl theme. I mean, there's there's a million different the Halloween, you name it, right? Right. That's a good idea. Just add that to the mix. Sure, exactly. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So right now you're booking up tours. You've got one golf cart. Are you what do your friends say? Are your friends like, what are you doing? Like, why? <laughs> No. So um, it is just me. I have a lot of people ask like if it's me or if it's me and a partner. It is just me. But like the support from my friends and family has been so unreal and so mm. heartwarming, honestly. Like they've all been so supportive. And um, we at the Barbie crawl, my friend Tegan, she was like, thank you so much for this business. Like she said that at the end of the night. She was like, thank you for buying this golf cart. Thank you for like giving us something fun to do. So yeah. No, they're, they've been super supportive. When you drive down Water Street now, like <clears throat> I was driving down last night um, home and <clears throat> the amount of people out on a Monday like blows my mind. Like you're from mm -hmm. Plant City. I'm sure you went to downtown Tampa when you were little. Yes. I'm sure you remember what it used to be like. No one was down there. You remember Channel Side before it was Sparkman Wharf? Yes, I would go to like the the movie theater in the like Splitsville. Theater. Yeah, I was just telling my wife I saw that movie Signs with Mel Gibson, that Alien movie. Oh, okay. It came out like twenty years ago, whatever. But I was just telling my wife, yeah, there used to be a movie theater where Sparkman Wharf is. Yeah. But there's so many. There's like so many people there now. It's freaking crazy. It is. I think it's awesome. But yeah, we're definitely at like almost an awkward stage yeah. in in the growth where right. Some people love it. Some people hate it. For sure. Of course, we're dealing with like inflation and things yeah. like that. So it's kind of that awkward stage. But ultimately, I think it's really great. Growing pains. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have lived here their whole life that don't want the growth. Mm -hmm. They like the growth, but if it's in their backyard or if it affects them on their commute, then they're like, what the hell? I don't, I don't want more people to move here. Yeah. I think it's good for the area, though. We Me need too. it. And 100%. the reality is you can't stop people from moving to Tampa. No, it's such a great city. And yeah. um, it's also been cool, like in Plant City, I do real estate out there too. And more and more people are moving to, you know, Plant City, Tampa Palms, Wesley Chapel, but like they're still a part of the Tampa mm -hmm. community, you know? Yeah, the area is huge when you think yes. about it. I mean, even all the way to St. Pete, Clearwater, up right. north, like the Tampa Bay area is pretty massive. I think I read there was like 4 million people that live in the area now. I believe that. Yeah, Which I think it used to be three something. So we've had a really yeah. big, huge influx for sure. I think more to come. Yes. I would Certainly agree. more to come, right? That's the thing. You can't stop the growth. You might as well try to manage it, maintain it, and then yeah. add cool services like you've got going on here. I think it's freaking awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. In some way. 100%. What about, um, so real estate, you are, uh, who is your broker? Um, McGrath Popel. So it's like a boutique brokerage out of Plant City. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I've been with them the entire time that I've had my license. So. It's crazy you got licensed right after high school. That's so young. Yes, it was very young. And I would probably do some things differently. But it was neat. I um, I think I went to the Tampa School of Real Estate. I honestly can't yeah. remember <laughs> where That's I got my education. One. Yeah. Um, and I was definitely the youngest person in the class. But I always tried to act not young. So I like showed up with a blazer and... Look, probably looking way too professional. Really. <laughs> She's definitely overcompensating. Everyone's like, who's this little girl with the <laughs> freaking suit on? Right. Do you think that real estate would translate into a tour? And I'm not saying like we were talking about earlier about you're pointing out buildings. I'm talking about like a growth tour, like a Tampa growth tour. You go around, you check out all the different projects. Yeah, that would be very cool. Interesting, right? Yeah. It seems like there's a ton of buzz about Tampa's growth like Tampa tomorrow's page is obviously mm -hmm. blown up there's there's a million different pages on Instagram or online I feel like I mean my page at least when you scroll like every other post is real estate that's probably because that's all I'm looking up on Instagram but right the point is there's probably enough action like an attention on growth and real estate that you could probably implement a tour that was like a Tampa growth tour that'd be kind of cool. that would be very cool yeah yeah yeah, thank you for that idea. <laughs> of course, I'm full of them. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, Ybor City, too, like we had on um, Drew Newman on the show. He's the fourth generation uh, cigar roller, cigar own, uh, factory owner in Ybor City. And, you know, they're going to start to do more stuff like this, too. Tours, um, 
they're actually building out like a little hotel kind of near their cigar factory. They've built out a museum in their cigar building. So That's like very cool. a lot of the history and, and touring and culture stuff like that is blowing up in Tampa as we get more people moving here. Yes. Yeah. And that's awesome. I, I really like watching like the small businesses and the businesses that have been here for a really long time, take advantage of it. hundred percent. Really great. Do you know, do you ever go back to UT and pitch your idea and tell the program kind of what you're up to? I do. It's so crazy that you asked that. So I was there just last week. I think it was one week ago today, um, kind of pitching the idea for the incubator program that Mm -hmm. um, the entrepreneurship center has for small businesses um, in Tampa. So I don't know if I'm going to be a part of it yet, but I was the program. So they really, um, it's amazing. They have a lot of resources that basically just help small business owners scale their business. And you can be at any point Mm -hmm. in um, business development, like whether it's just an idea or if you have paying customers or something that like you've already franchised, you can really be at any point in it. Um, but they help support uh, your your business development. Is that in that um, large building, like the Innovation Center, it's called? Yes. Oh, I yeah. think I saw it's right it up there. when we were there. Yeah. There's like a, you know, a huge room with all these different businesses on the wall. And yes, got that's it. Previous. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So you're pitching to be a part of that, and that comes with like funding, support. It can. I'm not looking for funding right now, but they do have resources to help you find it. That's cool. So, yeah, yeah. It's, what a, it's what a great place to go to to tap into that your degree, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, what do your parents think about the entire idea? Did they want you to stick with real estate? Did anyone tell you, "Hey, look, this is a bad move"? Well, <laughs> so I'm still sticking with real estate, and I think that's probably something that has helped everyone. They're like, "Okay, she's still going to do real estate. She still has that." Right. But um, no, I think that. I'm such a cautious person and I have like, I kind of overanalyze everything that I do. So when I came to them and I said, Hey, I think this is a great idea. They just trusted it. They were like, yep, me too. That's awesome. I think that's great. Yeah. So I didn't have to answer any uncomfortable questions for them. They were just super supportive. That's good. Yeah. It's always good to have supportive parents. Yes. It seems like this, this program is so cool because entrepreneurship is so wide. From a restaurateur to a tour company like you to a real estate agent to one person building their own business to someone that owns a company with hundreds of people. I think the program is so interesting. I don't remember entrepreneurship being a degree when I was in college. I went to Florida State. I graduated in 2015. Maybe it was there, but I just wasn't looking for it. I don't remember anyone with an entrepreneurship degree, though. The fact that UT has it and it's so popular, I think it's great. I do think it's relatively new. So I got accepted in 2017 and I remember like just the way the professors were talking, I thought to myself, okay, I've kind of taken on a new Mm. degree. Like I'm a little trailblazer, you know? Yeah. Um, They still, they had had the program for a couple of years before I went there, but I think that um, other colleges started implementing it around that time. Mm. So it's become, it's definitely become more popular since then. Is it, is it like a mix of business classes? I mean, are there mathematics involved? Do you have to take like business calculus and stuff like that? Yes. Management, marketing, all the above. So I I think honestly, the reason that um, I pursued it was because it was so wide in terms of the classes that you were taking. So I didn't have to focus just on finance or just on marketing. I did minor in marketing, Mm. but um it was, it was everything, finance, accounting, marketing, management, really did all of it. It's a great degree. I like it a lot. I would suggest any new student that doesn't know what they want to study, study entrepreneurship. Yeah, I agree. And you, th- exactly that. So like if you're taking all of these courses and you find maybe one niche that you really enjoy among the other, like maybe you can pursue your master's or go on to um, study that more. Yeah. A lot of kids study biology and then they don't do medical school. They don't do nursing school or you study finance and then you end up being a salesperson. I mm-hmm. think entrepreneurship is cool. It just translates to anything you do. 
I agree with that. You know, and yeah. there's nothing that can prepare you for the real world. Like even the real estate license. I mean, the questions on that don't teach you how to sell real estate, right? No. But no. entrepreneurship is cool. Like if you can get a taste of marketing and advertising and, and business accounting and stuff like that, you graduate with a little bit of an edge. Whereas I think if you just focus on finance and you want to do sales, like you know nothing about business really. Right. So this, this, this is really, really interesting to me. And I've heard again, so, so, so much about it. Like it's crazy how the program is blown up. And I think Tampa is the perfect like incubator for business. There's so many people moving here. There's so many young people. Like we talked before we went live. There's so many UT kids staying in Tampa now. This program is perfect for Tampa's like new generation of business owners and entrepreneurs. I agree with that. Yeah. And I think we've been ranked in a couple of magazines. I can't remember them off the top of my head. That's but so amazing for a small as, school. Yeah. But we've been ranked um, and Tampa as a whole has been ranked really highly in terms of like starting, starting businesses. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing that the city's missing really, because if you think about all the growth in Tampa, there's a lot of exciting like buildings going on and there's some good restaurants and stuff like that. But really the foundation to a city is the business, like the workers, the people that move here that need high paying jobs. Like if you don't have a base that can support that as a foundation, people will move elsewhere. Yes. So <laughs> this kid, this I've seen him around a couple of times. Do you know him? Um, he owns. Uh, I do not. No. John Carlo. I think, oh, he owns like a pest control company. Oh, that's cool. There's so many kids. There's so many ambitious kids at UT. I love it. To have that right here in Tampa, we're blessed. I agree. It's yes. awesome to keep the talent too. Yes. So 100%. you were probably one of the only local kids at UT in your class. Yes, which I wasn't expecting. Really? But yeah. I, well, I just, I thought, I don't know. I thought UT like. Tampa kids. Tampa kids. Yeah. yeah but um, when we would introduce ourselves at the beginning of classes, like I was the only Floridian. Where for the most like part. Plant City. What's that? Yes. Course. Yeah, I just said Tampa. <laughs> After <laughs> the first semester, I was like, I'm from Tampa. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool. We need that base. And, and these young, this young generation, these kids that graduate are going to create their own businesses. And to be in a city that has this much growth and this much going on, there's so many doors that have opened up that weren't available. Like when you were little, right? Like Tampa was so, it was like a quarter of what it is today. So all these new kids that are coming from the Northeast that have different business ideas than you or I that grew up here, they're going to bring so much to the table. And Ahoy Tours, like, for you to create this specific, like, very niche idea, it's going to inspire other kids from that program, too. I think this is just really the beginning of that program. I think when we're at the top of our career, when we're 50, 60 years old, I think you're going to look back and you're going to see some business leaders in Tampa that are like, yeah, I was a 2023 grad of the UT entrepreneurship program 30 years ago. Yeah. hundred percent. Look at you whipping down Franklin. Oh, I do whip. Yeah, that's true. I've, um, it's gotta be a fun job, right? It, oh yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it job, it doesn't even honestly feel like a job, but, um, well, sometimes it does. It has its moments, but it's very fun. Yeah. Do you work every day or how do you typically schedule? I am working pretty much every day on something. So whether that be real estate or mm. if I have a tour booked, but I am starting to like finally kind of get my weekends filled up uh, with tours or bar crawls. Um, my weekend, so to speak, tends to be Monday and Tuesday. Like I don't think mm. I've gotten many tours or crawls booked. For that. So your tours are on the weekend. You don't do weekday tours? I do. Yes. Mm. Yes, I do. But just the majority of people kind of book um, towards the weekend. So this is cool. So you pick people up at a certain spot. You actually get out, it looks like, too. And Yes, we take photos. If, again, if people want to hang out, like if we're at Sparkman Wharf, and they'll be like, oh, there's ice cream over there. I'm not going right. to say no. Get back in the bus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we leave in five minutes. Did you name your golf cart? I haven't. But you got to come up with a name. I've had some suggestions, like Bumblebee, stuff like that. Yeah, you got you to gotta play on the yellow, right? Yeah, I'm going to ask black. chat GBT. I couldn't believe I actually rent a house right now on Davis Islands and we bought a golf cart and I went to Icon and I kind of looked around. I can't believe how expensive those things are. 
Yeah, they're Crazy. really something. Yeah, I mean, they're fantastic. And like the fact that they're electric is really convenient. You don't have that loud yeah. like noise. But um, Yeah, you don't want a gas one for a tour company. No, I thought about it. And then I saw a gas golf cart somewhere. I don't know where it was, but I was no. very quickly opposed to it. So No, the ones they make today are all, they beat gas all day. Because they're not only are they quiet, but you just charge them. Like you don't have to go to a freaking gas station, fill them up. They probably drive for what? Hours and hours and hours. It depends. Um, so I do go like down Bayshore and I'll kind of just watch my battery fall oh, down Bayshore. <laughs> but it's just because it's that long stretch where right. I'm just flooring it the whole time. So um, it How gets fast up can this thing get up? 23. That's not bad. No, it's not. I mean, I'm definitely not taking it. I don't think I'm allowed to take it on streets over 35. Mm. So I've curated my route to that. But yeah, I mean, even if I could take it on like the highway, absolutely not. You probably wouldn't want to. No, anyway. it wouldn't Jesus. be a good experience. So did you, you had to look into like the laws for driving a golf cart on the road and yes. all that. What are they? So you can't go over what, 35? 35, you have to have, um, and Davis Island EV was really great. So they did the street legalization for me, but oh, they're, cool. yeah. So they get it um, inspected by the DMV and make sure mm. that everything's up to code. But there's That's a awesome. lot of things like you need blinkers. Um, I have like a little, uh, windshield wiper that you like operate by hand but because you need a windshield wiper oh. um so yeah just like little seat belts of course so there's the like windshield that. wiper yeah that's a, that's a big one right like you're gonna get caught out in some storms and and living in florida all day yes every afternoon yes so you got ponchos under the seats i do have a poncho so everyone has <laughs> you're on your own people <laughs> no it's not for me so every <laughs> that would be really funny though actually um, everyone under the seats is covered and protected, but there are two seats on the back and, um, mm. I need to get another poncho, but actually the way that I've done it. So I have a tour at 11 and then 6 PM or 5 30 for the crawls, depending on what day it is. So that has kind of limited the amount of rain that I get, um, because they're primarily like in the afternoon. So mm. that's, that's been helpful, call. but yeah, I should probably just go ahead and get another poncho. <laughs> Yeah, right. Have one under every seat. Does it? Are there storage units under the seats? Or it's probably the batteries, right? Yes. So there are storage units under the front two seats, and then the third has the, the battery underneath it. That's awesome. That's a yeah. sweet ride. Thank you. And it almost has, like, street tires, too. Like, the golf cart I have is more, like, off-road. Like, it's got these bigger, right. bumpier tires. This one looks comfy on the road. Yes. Yeah, the, I think that's actually part of the, the process that they do. They put different tires mm. on there. Like, yeah. street... Wow, street tires. Right. How's that thing roll over the brick we have here in the city? Um, actually pretty well. And I always throw in that a lot of the brick is original, so people kind of appreciate it more. It's a cute little selling point of the tour. Right. You're like, yeah, exactly. don't mind the brick. It's it's, it's original wholesome. brick. It's from Georgia, eighteen hundreds. Um, but for the most part I try to keep people off the brick. Like I think Franklin and then um eighth and Ebor are the only two mm. brick moments that we have. Yeah. But it's pretty, they had some program. Decent. They wanted to brick 7th Avenue in Ybor City. And it was like... That would be horrible. It was like For $15 me. million dollars or something ridiculous wow. like that. It was like more expensive to redo the brick than it was to redo the asphalt. I love oh, the sure. brick. I think it's gorgeous. I, agree. I think it adds to the city's character. I agree with that. Yeah. Probably not ideal for golf cart tours. It's though. not the most ideal. But like I said, I mean, the cart is... It's good. It, it rolls over it. Honestly, the only rough part is like the train tracks on um, mm. like Ashley that right. we go down. Those train tracks are <laughs> so bad. Even if you're in a car, they're pretty rough. So I, I warn people. Yeah. You're like, hold on. This is going to be the bumpiest part of the tour. So just hold on. Yeah. Did you say the bricks are from Georgia? A lot of them are. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think it's Augusta, Georgia. Maybe. Oh, cool. Maybe. Like they were manuf Do you know the history behind it? I don't know. For sure, if they were manufactured there, but they they are from um, they are from Georgia. Are you, are you looking it up? You get you get one little like five year old in the back seat. Oh, really? They're from Georgia. What where? year were they manufactured? Yeah, no, that's where? what I mean. Some people do ask questions like that. And um, what's your plan? Wing it? No, um, I know I've had some people. That they're like, well, you could just lie. I was like, I'm not gonna no. lie. <laughs> um, but I see Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Hyde Park right. to Tampa, leave our brick streets alone. Click that article. Interesting. You were right. But uh, so I, I am honest. I'm like, you know, I'm not sure about that. And then at the next stop when they're off, I 
quickly Google, Google a it. quick Google search. Very quick Google. That's an important part of the tours, though. I think if you could establish yourself as, like, fun, you know, the cool tour, like, the right. drinking thing, but also, like, knowledgeable of the city. Yes. And able to explain these old cool stories and the history of whether it's the brick, whether it's a building, whatever it would be, that only makes your tour better. I agree. So look at this. The red clay blocks that once paved 7th Avenue were removed decades ago. The city does not own enough of the bricks to fully pave it. Mm. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Most of the original bricks that pave Howard Avenue from Bayshore are still there, hidden under asphalt. You'll see that a lot driving around in Tampa. Yes. When the road's broken up with all the freaking potholes we have here, you'll see brick right. underneath. It's a shame. It'd be really cool they could if they could rip up the asphalt and just have brick roads everywhere. I think that'd be beautiful. That would be so cool. Yeah. Scroll down to that picture. She's probably pointing at the bricks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Exposed brick that. on South Howard. Imagine, though, the work that would be. Jane Castor, what'd she say? They calm traffic, cooler in hot summer months, contribute less to stormwater runoff than asphalt, enhance home values, and would be a primary character defining feature of Hyde Park. I agree with all that. I do, too. I mean, it does calm traffic. You're not going to be whipping down a brick road at right. even 40 or 50 miles an hour. Like, no, it's just not going to happen. Even on the cart, I slow down on the brick. It's yeah. It's like 20, maybe 18, 19. I think the neighborhood's on to something. Cools the road down? I don't know about that. Like temperature-wise? I guess. I think. I mean, I think that's the reason asphalt like, breaks up is because it, it gets heat? so hot, I think. That's what I've heard. That's such a good selling point for f like any city in Florida. Like, hey, if we do this, it's going to cool off the area. People are like, I'm in. I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> They're like, we're going to paint all of the roads white. I'm in. Yeah. So do you ever sit down and do research? I mean, do you look up history, stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. So um, in like March and April, that's pretty much all that I was doing. I was just. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you kind of front loaded your knowledge and hist history of the area before you yes. launched. Yes. Yeah. So I. Really wanted to look at Tampa um, to your to your earlier point about um, people that are from the Northeast creating businesses down here. I think kind of the edge that they have is they look at Tampa not as something that they've known and they don't like put those limits on the city to whereas mm -hmm. maybe someone from here might go, oh, I don't know if that's going to work or I don't know if we have the resources for that. So I tried to look at Tampa as a new city, like I was a newcomer and um, learned all of the fun and exciting things about it that's such a smart perspective it really is we had on Bra brad olachansky last week with the motor enclave and when i first heard of his idea to create basically a racetrack test track off-road track garage condos it's like this 150 million dollar insane development mm -hmm. when i first heard of that idea i was like bro this guy's crazy no way I was like, there's no way he's going to sell these out. Turns out they're sold out. They're, I believe it. They have thousands of people. I mean, it's like insanely popular. He's been extremely successful with it. That was such a good point. The people that are from Tampa see the city. They put the city in a box and they see it in a certain way. Whereas a newcomer to the city, anything is possible. Right. Like Brad, like he created this idea. He's not from Tampa. Why wouldn't Tampa work in his head? Right. For me, being from Tampa, I'm like, there's no way. Oh, I would have also been like, yeah. there's no way. Like, yeah. there's no way, right? I don't know. Our area is growing so much. It's that's. I think it's important to keep that perspective. If you have a growth mindset, like we do, like I know Tyler does too, think about Tampa in that way. Like, anything is possible. Like, we could be the size of Boston one day. We could be right. a huge, huge city one day. And that comes with all these different ideas and definitely comes with certain businesses and and things that no one thought was possible yes look at water street i know and so many people i mean like like you said last night on a monday night it's flooded with people and um it took a lot of brave people to put that together and say hey we want to make this you know we want to put a, like a five-star luxury hotel here yeah and look at it it's super successful sold out people love it yeah same thing with the ritz carlton Yes. Ritz Carlton on Bayshore, that first tower sold out. The second one's halfway sold out. Yeah. People would have never thought just a few years ago you could do a Ritz Carlton project, the tallest building on Bayshore Boulevard, completely sold out before they put a shovel in the ground. Right. 
I mean, it's really crazy what's happening here. I think to put the city in any sort of a box is stupid. Like any idea you can think of that's been implemented in another city is entirely possible here in Tampa. I agree with that for sure. There's such an influx of different ideas moving here too from around the country. Mm -hmm. And again, like going back to what we talked about with UT students, a lot of those, you know, their parents aren't from here. They are not from here. They're coming with those new ideas. Yes. It's not like everyone from Tampa is just having a bunch of babies. No, it's like there's this influx of people into Tampa with all these crazy new ideas. Yeah, no, and it's it's awesome. I've actually had a few, um, I had some UT parents that said that they picked my tour because they saw that I was, I guess I put that I was a UT graduate on there. Oh, really? Yeah, That's I made my call. profile a very long time ago. So you should advertise at UT too. Yeah, so they were, um, and they want to see like where their kids go to school and where yeah. they hang out. I wonder if you could set up a tour with the school. That would be, that's something that's kind of on my idea list. Yeah. yeah. And I really want to network. So I've obviously I've networked with um, the local bars that I go to and they kind of help promote me um, a little bit, but I want to keep networking with like UT, different mm-hmm. businesses around. That's a good call. Yeah. Because I would imagine UT obviously does campus tours, right? They, yes. they have their own little area on lock. Right. But I don't remember, like I know Florida State has that. Every college has a campus tour. But I don't remember Florida State ever having a tour outside of campus. I don't think they do that. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. I would imagine, too, up north, the word is out about the University of Tampa. I think so, yeah. Um, I know that the people that have applied in, like, the past year, it's, like, tripled or something from what it was a couple of years ago. So definitely they're getting... They're getting a lot of promotion up there, as they should. It's a fantastic school, so. It's gorgeous, too. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Being on the river and, like we talked about earlier, the warm weather, yeah. It's a really big selling point. A hundred percent. And you're downtown, which is really cool, too. It's very it walkable. So many UT kids go to that crunch on uh, in Channelside. Yes. Yes, I sometimes go to that crunch in Channelside. It's so busy. It's too busy. It's so packed. The whole city goes there. It's yes. too crazy. Everyone knows the crunch in channel side. I've had to like, I've literally walked out of that place twice in the last two weeks. I believe it. Yeah. You have to go at some crazy time, (laughs) even though I'm sure it's busy. Like I went there at like 11 on a Tuesday and it was busy. Sure. I was like, what? Because it's all college kids. Yeah. Like between classes. (laughs) Yeah. They don't, you know, they don't have jobs right now, but there's a new uh, gas works opening up in, uh, Mm -hmm. in Ebor. Not a new gas works. There's a new Gold's Gym opening up. In I knew what works. you were talking about because you had her on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she was interesting too. She's from Kentucky and what a crazy idea she has. That's another thing like opening up this huge, massive gym basically right next to a crunch. But I think it's needed. I think it's She's a gonna great crush idea, it, right? You know, but it's like those bold ideas, those entrepreneurs who have those bold ideas. I feel like Tampa is so prime for bold entrepreneurship I because agree. of the growth. Mm-hmm. You know, you wouldn't, you would look at demographics, I feel like, and say, hey, there's a crunch right there. We're not going to build a gym right there. Like it's too oversaturated. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you they're going to build that place and both gyms will be packed. Yes. Yeah. And I think, I think just as like a very early entrepreneur um, and in real estate too, sometimes I've let saturation stop me from pursuing something. But I think if you have something of value to offer, just go ahead and do it anyways. hundred percent. You know, because people are, are always going to be driven towards that value. So even if someone else is doing the same thing, like if you, are better you know if you had like that special sauce to you so I think um I think you'll be successful 100 percent. did you have those hesitations creating this business like right after you bought the golf cart were you like oh shit what did I do yes and no I kind of so I did some market research before beforehand using the knowledge that I had from UT and it's funny because when I was in the program, I was like, yeah, so if you want to start a business, you need to do six months of market research. You know, like I had all of these things on paper that I thought I would do. But then when I had a business idea that I was really passionate about, like I said, I called like the next day and placed an order for an eight seater golf cart. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of placed that order to hold me to it mm. because I knew that I could make it work if I really pursued it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's why I just like dove into the deep end yeah i think you have to do that 
yes. you're going to start a business as an entrepreneur, at some point you got to pull the trigger. Right. And I don't think you're ever going to be ready. No, I mean, you just have to be, it's like such a cheesy line, but you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, I think. A hundred percent. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no readiness to an idea. It's more so you have the idea, implement it. It doesn't mean don't do your research. And it sounds like you did a lot of research. Yes. Were there tools at UT that you mentioned like a marketing something that you used from the program? Um, well, I think my biggest takeaway from the program is like, creating a business model and a business plan and implementing that. Right. But um, I know, and it's been three years since I've been there, but they've had like a lot of new resources um, that could probably help with marketing and, and things mm. like that. But it was yeah. really just like the knowledge of it for me. What was the, <clears throat> going back to your education, the, the graduate program, what kind of differences were in the entrepreneur undergraduate program and the graduate program? Was it essentially the same thing, just more, specialized and more um, like dialed down information? Yes, I think that's a good way of putting it. Um, I don't want to say that it was the same because it was so dialed in. Yeah. That it felt like a completely different experience. So I think that the graduate program really caters to people that want to be entrepreneurs. I would say it's best to go in when you have a business idea that you want to pursue because that whole year is going to be helping you mm. um, like dial into that. Yeah. So that's a part of the program too, is creating a business. Yes. It's like a term paper you would regularly write, but right. in the entrepreneurship program, you actually create a business. Yes. So was this the business that you created? No, it was, um, it was going to be like a real estate brokerage thing. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Which I'm still interested in, but um, you know, I've, Again, I wasn't necessarily like in that program to to start a business, um, right. which sounds so weird. Like, why would you pursue that? <laughs> why would you pursue that degree if you weren't? But I just really liked, like I said, the resources, the faculty, and the knowledge because I do think it can be implemented. Um, like, even if you're a manager somewhere mm -hmm. and you want to drive up sales, like 100%. you're going to use that. Yeah. Do they have a sales degree? At University of Tampa? I actually don't know. I took some sales classes. Right. Um, and so they definitely have those. I have like a few sales certifications, but I don't mm. know if it's a degree yet. Because this degree, entrepreneurship, is kind of like a sales degree in a yeah. way. Because you're hitting all those marketing and advertising and closing points, I'm sure, in the program. Right. Well, and by the time you get out of the program, I feel like you look at everything. Like sales isn't everything. Like no matter what 100%. you're doing, it's sales. Yeah. So they kind of... They drive that home for sure. Absolutely. You guys have awesome speakers too. So this is, there's obviously like a club, right? An entrepreneur club. Yes. So are, is that what is getting all the speakers or is the actual degree, the program itself inviting these people in for classes? I think it's a mix. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a mix when <sighs> I was there. And then they also have like the incubator program. They have a speakers series where they invite um, people to come and, and kind of give advice to the people in the um, incubator, the business owners. I think that's awesome. It is. It's really great. It's pretty, it, I feel like it would be an easy ask for the program too, to ask a business owner because who doesn't want to help out the young kids, right? The school, like who doesn't want to go into a school and help that next generation? Exactly. Well, when I was there, um, they were so like, they were so eager to help and they would also show us like their P and L statements, like very transparent. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they were very, like, and you really got, it wasn't just, hey, I'm a successful business owner. It was, mm -hmm. hey, here's, like, the mistakes that I've made. That's and huge. Here's, yeah, like, they were very transparent and vulnerable, and um, I think that was super impactful. That's what always helped me, like, the last few years when I first started my company. I didn't, my degree was in social science, so basically I, st I had a primary concentration and a secondary concentration. My primary was economics. And my secondary was political science. And then I got a business minor. But in none of those studies did it teach you about those failures, those mm -hmm. mistakes, the pitfalls, some of the issues that come up in creating a business, that would have been super helpful before graduation. Because after graduation, starting a business, you kind of, you look to, you don't look for people that have failed, but there's something that you enjoy when you're starting a business. And I'm sure you would agree, like 
when you see someone who's at the top of their game in your space and they talk about in the beginning, it was hard in the beginning I had to overcome X and I had to do this and that it helps a lot. Cause then you're like, Oh shit. Like I'm not the only one that's screwed up or I'm not the only one that is going through a struggle. Like this right. guy who's crushing it went through that same struggle when he was at my level creating his business. Exactly. So to have that in a school setting, in a classroom setting, I think is amazing. I didn't get that, you know? Yeah, no. And it, it was really important because I think if you don't hear about other people's mistakes, you're going to view your one mistake as like this giant obstacle when in reality it's something that is just kind of a challenge and you can get exactly. past it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're going to deal with that too. And and even stuff that you wouldn't think about, like a golf cart breaking down on the tour. Oh, I've thought about it. I have nightmares about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the biggest concern because if yeah. that happens, yeah. what, what do, do I do? Foot? Yeah, what do you do? Oh my gosh, no. I would probably, I have thought about it. I would probably <laughs> apologize 200 times and then get people like Ubers or something. I don't know. Ooh, <laughs> I hope it never tough. happens. I do look at everything before I do the tour though. And I take it on like a little loop. Um, around oh, that's my a building. good call. Yeah, just to make sure everything's running and that doesn't Test happen. Drive. Yeah. Where do you charge this thing? Just at your apartment? Yes. Just in like the EV? No, there, well, so I, in the future, I want to get like a charger port so I can plug it into an EV. Mm. Um, like right, an adapter? Right, yeah. So you have to get an adapter for that. And I'm also looking at lithium batteries instead of the ones that are in here. So mm. lithium would give me... Um, a longer range and oh, cool. the ability to charge more quickly. So there's an upgrade you can get for the cart. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I thought that thing was maxed I know. out. No, I've seen it can prices. get very serious. No, it can get very, very serious. They're like as much as a car by the time you add everything up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, especially if I like do the lithium so and the charge port all in, I'll probably be like, I don't know, 30. Oh. Yeah. But it's badass. It's Thank really you. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a logo on it? I'm getting one. So I, again, I like started before maybe I was ready, but um, I am ordering a logo to put on the front of it. Hell yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to like wrap it completely or just put a logo and maybe like some contact information on the side. Both are good ideas. One yeah. of them costs more than the other. Yeah. But I think that's the way to get a lot of business is people looking around and seeing a yellow golf cart. What the hell is that? A holy tours. And then they look yes, it up, right? Exactly. Like that's a big piece of it. Yes. Make sure you drive by those cruise ship stations too. Right. And like the convention side. center. I want to start oh, yeah. like kind of scheduling that. So people look to do things like this when they're in town for the weekend. They do. Excuse me. Like if you're in Tampa for a convention, you're not at the convention 24 seven. No. And you're going to be looking for something fun to do. That's local. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they go to a city, they like to go out to dinner at the nicest restaurant. They're Googling like best restaurant in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Well, they're also going to be looking to do fun stuff during the day too. I think this is perfect. If you get a logo on this thing and you start riding around to strategic locations, that's a yes. great way to get business rolling. I think so too. Yeah. That's kind of funny though, that before you even have a logo on the cart, I'm out there. You got bookings and you're out there and you're, yeah. you're going. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, hundred percent. That's kind of you have to. You got to jump and you got to make it happen. Right. I think that's definitely what I've learned in like the past couple of months. Is even if you're not ready, even if because I was going back and forth on the logo, that's why I haven't put it on there yet. Um, so I was kind of tweaking things, and um, but I was like, why should that stop me from putting it on TripAdvisor, Viator, and going out and doing it? Yeah. When you start a business too, you think about the end game and like <clears throat> the ultimate iteration of whatever you've come up with mm -hmm. for you what's the ultimate vision of ahoy tours i want it to be like a pillar of tampa tourism so i want to have golf carts i want to have boats maybe even airbnbs which i'm scared to say um after the airbnb scandal um what airbnb scandal they called it like the Airbnb bust or something. Oh, where yeah. Where it's just, but I think there's room in Tampa to do something like that. But the, that's probably looking at national, like macro level statistics. And that it includes is. people that own Airbnbs in like Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you have an Airbnb in Tampa, you're still doing pretty well. Yeah. So I would just want to do that, um, like in a way that stimulates the city still. And um, yeah, just be like a pillar of Tampa tourism. 
Boats would be hilarious. Right? Because there's that there's quite a bit of. Like they there have is. the dolphin tours, pirate water taxi. Is it really a tour, but it kind of is. Like kind I feel of, like people yeah. take that just to you kind of like take city. it down. Yeah. Yeah. Tampa's so awesome on the water too. It's an interesting perspective that you don't get driving around. Yes. I actually took the um, pirate taxi for the first time ever last year, which was I was like, why have I never done this before? Yeah. Like, I went to UT. I grew up around here, but I just hadn't done it. It I was so cool. I think I've done it like once. It was very cool. I yeah. almost signed up for a membership. Oh, they! Like, I didn't know they had a yeah, membership. Yeah, they do like a yearly a yearly thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. I almost did that. The ferry's badass too now. Have you taken that? The no. Tampa to St. Pete ferry? I have not, no. I've heard that's it's very, amazing. That's awesome. And they have good times too where like you could leave Tampa at, I think nine or 10 in the morning, mm -hmm. go to St. Pete for the whole day on like a Saturday. And then you can come back at like 10 PM. That's perfect. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Cross Bay Ferry. This thing's badass, man. It hauls ass too. Like this thing goes quick. I think you can get from Tampa. Try to see if you can find it, Tyler, like Tampa to St. Pete in like maybe that. 30 or 40 minutes. That's really great. Especially with traffic. That's still faster than um, a car. There's so much you could implement in your advertising to capture people that would be interested in doing your tour. I mean, think about even advertising on the ferry. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of what you're connected to in terms of like locally in the urban core is probably where you would advertise, right? Like even on the water taxi, like talking yeah. with them about a partnership. Yes. All that sort of stuff. What's, is that kind of your game plan this year is growth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and establishing those relationships mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. What do you do for the bars? Is it like a drink voucher? Like they mentioned they're on the tour, you get a discount. Um, so that's something that we're probably going to be implementing um, just because I've been doing it for the past, I guess it's three, two and a half months now. We kind of wanted to see what the volume would be, mm -hmm. but they've all been very like super supportive, like what can we help you do? Can we give you a drink voucher? We can extend happy hour, you know, those sort of, those sorts of offerings have been really great. Yeah, they have the Cross Bay Ferry, uh, Tampa Ferry Terminal located at the Tampa Convention Center just east of the sale in Franklin Street. Yeah, so if you're staying at the Vinoy in St. Pete, you can come to Tampa mm -hmm. for the day, vice versa, like right. go back and forth, downtown to downtown. I think it's huge. And I think it's going to expand too. I think any business in Tampa done strategically with yes. care is going to grow. I think we're in an extremely high growth position for any business. You just have to be smart and not go too crazy. Don't buy 10 golf carts before you have. I know. <laughs> Some people were asking me, they're like, don't you want to buy another golf cart? I'm like, no, not right now. That would be show them the price tag and they'll be like, Oh, never mind. Everyone is pretty shocked. I have gotten a few like customers that ask and really, yeah, they're, they're always pretty surprised. Do your customers, and obviously, they probably know that, hey, this is a new business, and I'm a mm -hmm. student, and I created it. What do they think about that? They love it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when I mentioned, like, the the parents that found out that I was a UT alum, they were like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, that's why we picked you. And, uh, no, I, I get, like, a lot of people that want to support the small new business. So that's, that's been really huge. great. Yeah. I'd imagine so, especially from UT. Yes. I think that's uh, that's really cool for them. They were funny. They were like, yeah, our daughter goes to, um, where's McDitton's? Is McDitton's a good place? Our daughter goes there all the time. It's like, yeah, it's a great place. <laughs> <laughs> Where yeah, do, you, do you do your bar crawl on Howard? I don't, but it is something that I could implement. Right now I have um, four bars that, I, like I said, I've set up those relationships, um, one in downtown, mm. one in Channelside, one in Ebor, and then Armature Works. Okay, so you so, bounce around a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I guess you could eventually one day concentrate like Ybor City Bar Crawl. Boom, it's just that on yeah. seventh or whatever you want to do. Interesting. So you kind of you even the bar crawl is a tour in terms of like you're bouncing around the urban core. Right. Yeah. So it's not like I said, it's not as informative. I've got like the music playing, but we see a lot. And you I'll, see a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'll point some things out. Yeah. Are most people who do your tour local or are they visitors? Mm, it's kind of a mix. So mm. for the bar crawl, I have a lot of local people kind of wanting to do like a fun night out and um, people that did like the staycation uh, wanted to, it's just like a fun night. People mm -hmm. want to do it for like their birthdays, things like that. 
So um, definitely more local for that. And then the informative tour seems to be like strictly out of towners. That makes sense. Yeah. Have you seen those little bar crawl, like tiki hut things driving On the water? around the river? Yeah, yeah, those are awesome. Those are freaking sweet. Yeah, I want to talk to them too. Like I would like to set up, even if they are doing a tour and they would be, like some people might look at that and be like, oh, that's a competitor. But I think we're doing completely different things. So it would be worthwhile to um, oh, I think set it's something up there. Too. I don't know that so. anyone's doing exactly what you're doing. I mean, I don't know if there's any other golf cart tours. Um, there. there are. Yeah, actually there are. Really? And I know, yeah, there's this guy. I know that he just started like a couple of months ago. Um, huh. Maybe even more recent than that. But they're all like a little bit different. Um, the one company I know just does like, in like kind of sightseeing tours. Mm. Um, and then the other, I think he does like brew crawls or something. So, Oh, that's an yeah. interesting one. Yeah. Well, there's the brew. I've seen the brew bus. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sweet. Again, completely different than what you do. That's like literally a bus, like a, a motorized bus that drives around to different breweries around town, which yeah. is even, that's a different customer than who would be interested in doing a, like a little bar crawl on a right. golf cart. Exactly. Yeah. And with like the growth that we're seeing, I, I think there's definitely enough um, for everyone. May 25th is Tampa. So yeah. big time. Now they actually give golf cart tours. I know that Click literally that was article. published. Like when I started May 25th, how funny is that? But that's what I was saying earlier about it's indicative of a big city to have tours, right? Yeah. Like when you go to New York, when you go to LA, when you go to Boston, these larger metro areas, these bigger <sighs> cities around ta around uh, the country, mm -hmm. they have these tours. Like, yes. so Tampa, like all these tours popping up, it's indicative of like, hey, like we're, we're growing. Like this is a good thing. Yeah. Gasparilla would be sick. Right. And And maybe even some sort of a package where it's like, we pick you up at 9 a.m. on Gasparilla, we take you here for your first drink. We drop you off here for the parade for five hours, and then we pick you up and drop you off at your car. Like, yeah. you could do something like that, too, which I think would kill. It would. Yeah, that would be great. I wonder if you could rent golf carts. I was about to day. say, I would almost want to rent a golf cart for that. Like, if I'm still just at one, yeah, yeah that would be great. Do you have friends that are like, I want to do what you do? Um, I don't want to work at my job anymore. I want to drive golf carts around all day. Yes. In the heat... Maybe less people than like when I first ran the idea by them, like back right. in January. They were right, like, "Oh, that's so right. fun!" And now they're like, oh, "I don't know." Yeah. Um, sounds hot, but um, no, I've I've actually had a few friends that have said like, you know, when you get to a point where you're running multiple tours on like multiple golf golf carts, like I want to be a driver. That's amazing. Yeah, got to fit the right personality though with the tour guide though. Oh right, yeah. You know, yes. and you got to be knowledgeable. But hey, everyone can learn that. I think so too. No, I think for Gasparilla, like even, even Gasparilla is such a walkable thing, right? Like you're on your feet all day. I think as a young person, you don't care because you're with your friends, you're walking around, you're drinking, you're having fun. Yeah. But Gasparilla is for every age. Golf carts didn't, I say exist. They certainly aren't like they were today with these lithium ion batteries only like five right. or 10 years ago. Imagine you just stay on the golf cart all day. You're hitting up different locations on Bayshore, you're getting drinks. I think that'd be awesome. I agree. Like yeah. I have I a think. wife and a baby now. I would much yeah. rather hop on a golf cart than walk around in the crowds. Are you right. kidding me? Exactly. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think it would just be about like learning the the streets that you can take. Yeah. Um because some of them are like blocked off. But I think you could very easily do that. Oh for sure. You'd be turned around all day if you didn't do that kind of research. Yeah. All the Oh my gosh, roads. I can't even yeah, no, I can't imagine. No, that would suck. Yeah. So what's the deal with drinking on a golf cart? Did you look into all that? Yes. And you're not allowed to drink on the golf cart because it is a vehicle and it's like mm. breaking open container laws. That makes sense. Yeah. I have had a few people. I, I have to tell them, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Um, but for the most part, like they're grabbing a drink at each spot and right. um, they're there for 30. That. Yeah. So it's not really too big of a deal. And I think the drive between each location is like five, seven minutes. So it's not right. like... Yeah, but you, you have mention, a drink in your hand for the most. You did most mention part. cup holders. Yes, so for like water bottles and things like that, right? Like getting that in there. It would be cool, and I don't know if there's some loophole if you could do yes. a drinking tour where you're literally like sipping on a margarita, driving around Davis Islands. Yeah, 
we'll see if they make that happen. Probably not. It's, I mean, it's hard to say maybe, um, and maybe I can be a part of that like petitioning process, <laughs> but I think, yeah, it's probably pretty scary from the city, the city's perspective to be like, okay, we're going to allow alcohol on this vehicle. It kind of becomes maybe a gray area for them, but it's possible. Anytime sure. anything new pops up, I feel like the city is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, they get a little bit nervous. Yeah. Like, you remember a few years ago when the scooters became a thing? Yes. Like, overnight. Yes. That took off very quickly. Like, within days, I feel like there was just those Lime scooters and the Bird scooters. There was, like, five different, maybe even more companies at the time. Scooters right. were everywhere. Mm-hmm. Remember some guy got killed downtown on a scooter? Really? Yeah. Oh. It was a weird situation. Like, a bicyclist hit the guy. And I think it was either the bike hit the scooter or the scooter hit the bike. Someone died. It was tragic. But I think the city kind of cracked down. Now they have to be parked in like the certain areas and there's different rules. Yeah, the city's learned how to control that. But that was a big thing at um, UT too. Like kids would get in trouble for um, bringing the scooters on. Well, I mean, they would just like leave them in the middle of the road too. So Uh, it's sort of hard to navigate. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would have, because I remember when they first came out, they didn't have, like, the area blocks. You, you could drive them anywhere. Yes. On Bayshore, like, Going, everywhere. like, top speed. Yeah. And really, really quickly, they had those laws in place and those restrictions. Right. So kids were just whipping around campus on the scooters. Exactly. No, you would have to, like, look around the corner, make sure that someone wasn't coming on a scooter. Jesus. Yeah. I saw a video, I think it was on... Instagram reels or something like that, but this kid at UT like drove it off. Oh my gosh! Yes, by the yeah, by like the center. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I have seen that. Um, See, I I don't think you could do that now because it's blocked off. I don't think you could do that then. I mean, I think maybe (laughs) he just found a way around it. But no, I I really enjoy that video because like it's been made into so many memes. Oh my god! Marine biologist on my way to work and it drives (laughs) off into the water. (laughs) That's so, so funny. Yeah, it also might have been like a personal scooter. I know some people have oh, true. With those too, yeah. I saw a video, um, I think the Tampa Bay Times posted it. It was an article too about they pulled like 60 scooters out of the Hillsborough River or something like that. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I kids didn't were about just that. throwing them off the bridges and wow. UT kids, man. <laughs> no, I'm from UT. We're going to say those were USF kids. Yeah, those were USF kids. Those were USF kids. Yeah. Well, this is awesome. So, so your vision is to grow this thing right now. You're focused on the tours. I love it. How's your bookings? I mean, do you feel like what you've been doing so far, people are enjoying and you're getting bookings and it's going? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, a lot of my reviews are on Viator, which I didn't, I've like, didn't hear about until I started doing this. Never heard of it. No. So Viator is, but a lot of people use it. Um, it's like the parent company, if you will, to TripAdvisor. Okay. So it's like what TripAdvisor runs mm-hmm. off of it, like it's like the software that they use so um you can oh. also book directly through viator um i've heard some people say viator i'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced but um yeah when i started when i started out i knew that i wanted to be on TripAdvisor, and then it immediately routes you to viator and creating your profile on that interesting yeah yeah click that one tyler never heard of it mm-hmm. viator viator yeah Cool. And then I think um, the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is like if you go back to the Google results, the bar crawl and the iconic tour are listed separately. So I can't put it all in like one mm. link. Ultimately, I want to have my own website, but just because I'm starting out using like the promotion tour, the promotion tools with um, TripAdvisor and Viator have been really helpful. Pretty badass of you to do this without a website. Thank you. Yeah. Without a lot of stuff. Right. Just jumping in. Yes. Which I never thought I would do. Like I said, when I was in the program, I always was like the person in the group. If it was a group project, I was like, well, you really need to think this out. Like you need to plan ahead. And then mm-hmm. when it's my own thing in the in the real world, I just jumped into it. That's the best way to do it because you know what? You're going to create that website and then the, you're going to recreate it. Yeah. You're going to find something wrong. And that goes with any aspect of your business. I mean, that's what I've been doing, tinkering with my company for the last six years. Like, that's what you're going to do. So why create the perfect scenario when you're going to recreate it 10 more times anyway? Things evolve, new ideas come up. Maybe you have someone join 
with you, whether you hire them or a partner or whatever, Mm -hmm. and they bring different ideas to the table. Right. So you did the right thing. You jumped in. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Five star reviews. Yes. Amazing. Barbie bar crawl. Are you going to do an Oppenheimer bar crawl? (laughs) My friend made a joke about that. She was like, that would be so funny. I just don't know (laughs) what I would, I would do for that, but maybe. World the, War II themed. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. So are these all your, no, these are not your events. These are just oh, bar no, calls that's around just, town. Yeah, and like different, it looks like it might be catered. You know what though? Go back to that. That's an interesting place to find ideas. Sure. Ugly sweater for Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, Halloween. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. Well, I want to help you where I can because I think this is an awesome idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Of course. I want to highlight young people creating businesses in Tampa. Yeah. Like for Tampa. Like this is not a business that you're creating for yourself because you think it's cool and you want to make a bunch of money. Right. Judging, just looking at your business and talking to you, it's for the city. Yes. It's for the visitors. It's for the people that live here. And I think that's awesome. Thank you. And I also think you're going to crush it. Thank I like you your very logo much. too. Did you do yeah. Fiverr? No, um, it was a different website, but it's where like, I think it's kind of similar. Um, you post like a logo listing, what you want, and different artists reply to that oh, and cool. create logos. Sounds like Fiverr. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it's very similar. I'm sure you have a bunch of people at UT that can handle, maybe not at UT, but like contacts. Like you have different contacts, hey, a logo guy, a website guy, right? Yes. Through the program. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Thank you. So where can people go to book a tour? So you can go on Viator or TripAdvisor. Um, th- that's where I'm listed right now for special events um, like the Barbie crawl. I go through Eventbrite. Mm. That was my first event um, like listing using that. So I might change it in the future, but um, social media is a really good way to kind of see what we're doing. Uh, we're on Instagram as Ahoy Tours. So that's kind of our main platform right now. And that's a good way to just keep up with those special things like the Barbie bar crawl, um, maybe an Oppenheimer bar crawl. <laughs> um, it's hard to say, but atomic yeah. bomb themed. I don't know. I don't know what that would look like. I don't know what that would look like either. We actually don't drink on the Oppenheimer bar crawl. It's just sad. <laughs> it's just a sad. <laughs> it's just a sad ride around Tampa. Yeah. Um, but no, that's a really good way to um, to keep up with everything. And um, in the future, I definitely want a website. It's just kind of figuring out. Um, how those calendars can talk to each other. Yeah. I would imagine that's a pain point in the business of like the infrastructure of all of these different review platforms, all of these different booking platforms, and then the website, social, whatever that feeds to that. Right. Like that's probably a tricky part to figure out. It is. And it's like, that's kind of when I got into it, I thought that that was going to be, like naively, I thought that was going to be the easy part. It's like, okay, I'll make a calendar and I'll list it. And then quickly I realized there's a lot of different like little things that you have to know. And, um, you know, the act of making the calendars talk to each other, maybe a reservation system in the future. Um, that's, yeah, that's like a really key point. And that might come with the website too. Yeah, for sure. The, um, have you talked to visit Tampa Bay? I haven't, no, but they, I have like an Excel of, um, now that I have some reviews under me and I, I know what I'm doing more than a few months ago, I have like an an Excel spreadsheet of people that I want to talk to and connect with. Do you know Max with Ybor City Walking Tours? No, but I've actually heard of him and people were telling me to connect with him. Absolutely. I think you can partner with him. Um, and maybe it would be like you pick them up from the hotel and feed them to Max, right. vice versa. However, it would work out. But Max is a great guy. He owns downtown tours, uh, Ebor City Ghost Tours, Ebor City Walking Tours. Mm-hmm. He's the second generation who runs the tour company. He's got a ton of great reviews. He's like number one ghost tour on TripAdvisor. Yeah, he's, he's like a staple. Yeah, yeah he's legit. Sure. And what I think value you would get out of him is just his knowledge of Tampa. Sure. The history and the culture and the cigar knowledge. Here's his Instagram here. So he he kind of has that history piece on lock. And I think mm-hmm. that people coming to Tampa want to know that history. They do. Yeah. 
So he, he would be a great resource for you. And then visit Tampa Bay. That's like the tourism epicenter of people visiting this area. So they right. partner obviously with local businesses um, who are kind of showcasing different areas around Tampa. Yeah. And I think what you're creating is perfect for their viewers, right? A lot of people that, yes. you know, find businesses through visit Tampa Bay are looking for tours, right? They're not looking for like, I don't know, a real estate agent, you know, no, what I mean? they're, yeah. they're looking for like a tour yeah, of the city. For sure. So that's another yeah. cool resource too. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. I just kind of, I guess I, I wanted to look like legit and not be like, Hey, I'm 100%. starting this thing, you know, but 100%. sometimes you got like to prove it to yourself. Yeah, exactly. So how many, you're, you're at a few reviews now I saw. You've yes. Got like- well, and they're all different. So, um, to your point, like if you would review me on Viator, it's not, mm. it doesn't translate to TripAdvisor. It doesn't yeah. translate to Google. Um, so a lot of them are all different reviews. And a caveat to Viator is the fact that um, you have to be the person that booked to leave a review. So I could have a party of seven people, but only one of them can leave a review. Mm. Yeah. So it's kind of. Google reviews, you could get each individual yes, person to do exactly, it, exactly. which might be the move. Put up a little plaque with a QR code. Yes. I'm sure you've thought of it all. Yes. Just implementing it and getting it going. Well, Arden, it was nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you too. Thanks for doing the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I wish you luck. Thank you. Happy 25. Appreciate it. Yeah. Lucky number 25. Yes. All right, everybody. Go book Ahoy Tours. Check them out. If you love Tampa history, or if you just want to grab a drink and ride around in a golf cart, hit them up. Yeah. Let's All do right. It. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.